Now, I desperately didn't want to talk about Kevin Rudd, Julia Gillard and good old-fashioned boring Labor politics. In fact, often the word from above can be, this is a boring subject, please move on. Believe me, I want to move on. But then you get Julia Gillard punching out just a lazy 4,000 words that were all but an actual recognition of what the hell happened last Saturday. Now, in Julia Gillard's world, we would have been the day after a crushing election loss for Labor. But her people have been all over the place, including the Scot, who last time I checked, I think his 457 visa expires this week. Could it please be the first thing that Scott Morrison does is to revoke that man's 457 visa? Between him and some of the other apparatchiks and the staffers, the lies run around to this very day that Julia Gillard somehow would have done better than Kevin Rudd. And also, forget all that stuff that we have been saying for the past month or so, in fact the past two months, that Julia Gillard was full of class the way that she didn't say anything during the election campaign. She was not going to do a Kevin Rudd to Kevin Rudd. Well, it seems that she wasn't doing that for the Labor Party. She was doing it so she would be able to unload after Kevin Rudd had lost an election and she would have clean hands to do so. I said this to you through the week last week, that former Prime Ministers, apart from that their, real, that their role should be having commentary about what this country should be doing with the big issues of the day. Instead, with probably the exception of John Howard, it really is the role of the former Prime Minister to have a go at their political adversaries, to hold on to the grudges for all time, and also to try to have the last say in a debate across history. Now, we're going to get this, and both of them are very young people, so we're going to get this for decades. Kevin Rudd versus Julia Gillard. We're going to get the nonsense that Julia Gillard punched out, unsurprisingly, in The Guardian, the very same online newspaper that suggested it was going to be 50.1 to 49.9 at the election. Let's put it this way. They're friendly. Now, they can get Edward Snowden, the bloke who has released thousands of bits of information about the National Security Agency. They can get him in front of a camera, but they can't get Julia Gillard in front of a camera. No, instead, we all sit back and we read through the new professor of politics at Adelaide University. Their excuses, the obfuscation and not really owning up to what happened, which was that it was her herself who drove Labor into the mountain, in fact drove Labor into such a desperate place that they put back in the bloke who ultimately lost by the margin that he did last week. Now I agree with everyone. I couldn't think of a more boring subject than Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard. But we have been given a preview of what the next 12, 18 and well 15 years are going to be. 18 months and 15 years are going to be. It's going to be those two settling scores. It's going to be their apparatchik saying, of course we had to change the leader, or, well, when you change the leader to Kevin Rudd, you drove, you drove uh, it into a cliff. Well, I'm sorry, that's the way the Labor Party was always going. Now, I'm no fan of Kevin Rudd, and I believe that they should not have changed the leader in 2010. That was not the duly elected Prime Minister, and I thought the same in 2013. But the ultimate view that I have of both of these people is that for them to actually have a legacy with people who aren't the hardcore Labor voters, on the behalf of Australia, to Julia Gillard and to Kevin Rudd, shut up. Now, I know you're never going to move on, but shut up. This is the first of a three-prong approach that will come in from Julia Gillard. One, we get the essay. Two, she's going to do the Ann Summer stuff. And then three, comes the book. And then there's the interviews that come as a result of the book. Now, I get it. When you get rejected by the Australian people, you're in a fair amount of denial. But why don't you just turn that denial inwards and try and grow from it and then actually admit your mistakes? And then guess what? Some of us who may have been critical for the past three years and bored for the past six, well, we'll actually forgive you for what happened. Or at the very least, we'll better understand it. But tit-for-tat nonsense in friendly newspapers followed up by friendly interviews, followed up by a sycophantic account that's going to come via your typewriter, please leave me out of it. To both of them, shut up.